Hey everyone, this is Joe from Thunk Tank Podcast, and today I just wanted to briefly talk about an article that I came across in the New York Times, um, which addresses uh, an issue or an idea that I've actually come across several times in uh, various other places. And um, of course, as you can see here, this was an interview with none other than George R. R. Martin, the author of the very now famous series, uh, TV series, Game of Thrones. Well, he's the author of the books, of course, but um, yeah, I thought this was a really interesting interview, and uh, particularly because he raises or he addresses one topic that I notice has come up in the past. He actually, George R. R. Martin will uh, respond to fans uh, fairly regularly. Uh, he still has a live journal account for those of us old enough to um, remember that. And um, he uh, he responds to some fan theories and fan questions, which I think is quite uh, quite interesting sometimes in terms of the insight that he's able to give. Um, but also, he uh, is you know able to talk about some of the you know both relevant but crazy things that fans come up with. And one that has been going around for years now is this theory that well, Game of Thrones is really commenting on climate change and global warming as a as a threat for all humanity so um he was asked that in this interview and his answer that i've always read has been um that you know of course when he started writing the books uh which you'll see here in a moment was pretty much before climate change was well known or what we know of as climate change today wasn't fully established uh, so he said of course that wasn't his intent going in but i thought that his response here um it's sort of interesting in terms of what the larger theme or identity of a book or a book series like this is. So, uh, of course, the question that you can see here uh, is many observers have pointed out that Game of Thrones offers a perfect metaphor for understanding climate change. What do you think of this interpretation? And his answer, of course, he says, it's kind of ironic because I started writing Game of Thrones all the way back in 1991, long before anybody was talking about climate change. There is, in a very broad sense, there's a certain parallel there, and the people in Westeros are fighting their individual battles over power and status and wealth. And those are distra so distracting them that they're ignoring the threat of winter is coming, which has the potential to destroy them all and to destroy their world. And there is a great parallel there too, I think, what we see this planet doing here, where we're fighting our own battles. We're fighting over issues, important issues, mind you, foreign policy, domestic policy, civil rights, social responsibility, social justice, all of these things are important. But while we're tearing ourselves apart over this and expending so much energy, there exists this threat of climate change, which, to my mind, is conclusively proved by most of the data and 99.9% .9 of the scientific community. And it really has the potential to destroy our world. And we're ignoring that while we worry about the, the next election and the issues people are concerned about, like jobs, jobs are very a very important issue, of course. All of these things are important issues. But none of them are important if, like, we're dead and our cities are under the ocean. So really, climate change should be the number one priority for any politician who is capable of looking past the next election. But unfortunately, there are only a handful of those. We spend ten times as much energy and thought and debate in the media discussing whether or not NFL players should stand for the national anthem than this threat that is going to destroy our world. Uh, well said. I think that really sums up kind of what I've always thought that the series um, was about in terms of the, the nature of what we're ignoring or what we're ignorant of in terms of a larger uh, global scale issue like uh, climate change, which of course can destroy us all. And that lead, led me or that has led me in the past to, you know, really kind of point out that I think Game of Thrones is about this idea called tragedy of the commons, which... I'll link in the description. It's a lot to get into now, but essentially it's this um, social science idea. I hate to use Wikipedia. My students would kill me, but <laughs> this is a pretty good summary for a brief video, actually. Um, and I'll, like I said, I'll link actual uh, citations in the description. But it's this idea that if you have a collective uh, society or you have certain resources that are obviously shared and you can extrapolate that on a global scale... Um, in terms of sharing the earth, uh, but certain people abuse that shared resource for personal gain, eventually you can have a situation where there's um, 
there's not enough for everyone to go around and then everything kind of collapses from there. So I've always thought that that's sort of what the, the series is about. And it's kind of interesting how in this, in this case, I don't know what his intention was setting out when he wrote, started writing the series or he first published his book in 1991. So he would have been writing it in the late eighties. Um, but it, there's certainly a core sort of lesson there in terms of, of how we need to work together as a, you know, as one world in order to come out um, in, in the sense of just surviving. So um, I think this is a topic that we're going to talk about in coming episodes. I think eventually we're going to do a Game of Thrones episode. And I think actually it would be really cool to do an episode on the tragedy of the commons. So um, maybe that will be forthcoming. Um, anyways, I just wanted to briefly touch upon that for any Game of Thrones fans out there. Um, would love to know what you think in terms of what the, the series is about to you and um, and how this lesson, I think, is is very relevant uh, the more and more we get close to the, uh, of course, doom that seems that like we're headed towards, as Martin points out, with, with climate change and kind of our collective ignorance of it. Um, you know, we kind of know this throughout history. Uh, a pressing issue that, that doesn't affect everyone or each person personally can kind of go by the wayside and be ignored till it's too late. And I think you're seeing that now with climate change. So I'm glad Martin has finally admitted that. Uh, oh, look at that. His book uh, <laughs> happened to indirectly be about climate change. So maybe he'll talk more about that in the uh, the future. Happy coincidence, I guess, uh, except for the world ending. But anyways, that's all I wanted to share right now. Um, other than that, thanks for listening. Um, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.